We adored the original Evil Within, so jumped at the chance to dive back into its twisted world. You're still playing as Sebastian Castellanos, a man who has endured so much stress that he gives Jack Bauer a run for his money. Having only just escaped a world set in the decaying mind of a psychopath, powered by a machine called the Stem, he's heading back in when he finds out he might be able to find his missing daughter. The original game was one of the most relentlessly stressful experiences we've had on Xbox, and you'll be glad to hear that the sequel has not Mellowed. Here are six ways The Evil Within 2 is going to wreck you. If we were to summarize the original Evil Within in one word, it would not be subtle. The word we'd use is whatever noise our hero makes as he was chopped into meaty chunks by a man with a safe for a head. I would recreate the sound effect here, but I don't want you to vomit up your dinner. That's what YouTube calls a no-no. The freaky gang at Tango Gameworks still bring the yuckiness. Your dinner may revisit you in a second, but has also developed an eye for understated chills. This room, for example, is a simple flashback tutorial, but it teaches you to use the torch by hanging loads of dead ladies from the ceiling. That's both visually revolting and terrible feng shui. The dead ladies should be neatly arranged around the outside of the room for peace and good luck. Duh. Furnishing fumbles aside, the scene has more in common with psychological scares you get from classic J-horror films like Ring or Dark Water. Every time you turn around, there are more bodies hanging from the ceiling. And is it my imagination or have they all moved position? Walking through a forest of bloodied legs is not my idea of a fun night out. You spend your whole time waiting for one of them to spark back into life and lunge at you. That's a pretty full-on flashlight tutorial. As grim as the enemies got in The Evil Within, they at least all had flesh that could be riddled with bullets. The monsters in The Evil Within 2 obviously played the first game, noticed this fundamental flaw with their character design, and decided to address it by becoming ghosts. Well, this one did anyway. Ghost Lady is a new kind of threat for Sebastian, one that can't be dropped with a headshot and one that has the strength to move a sofa by herself. Normally, it takes at least two dads to carry a sofa, and dads are strong as hell, so you know she could mess you up. So begins a game of cat and mouse, where the cat is a six-foot lady with a magical floating dress. Must be a nightmare to fit in the washing machine. And the mouse is a man who can conveniently crouch at exactly the same height as every cabinet in the house. It's a horribly tense affair that makes you question every move you make by having the ghost lady announce her presence with a creepy song. This section feels more like a set piece from the original Evil Within's DLC, The Assignment, than the original campaign, as that add-on was more focused on slipping your unarmed hero around unstoppable forces. In that DLC, your main enemy was a giant lady with a lamp for a head. Do you find that scarier than a freaky ghost lady? Let us know in our convenient on-screen poll. Whatever the outcome, one thing is for sure. Bullets don't solve everything in The Evil Within 2, and that's going to put you in a severe disadvantage. Carrying on from the last point, you might have noticed that The Evil Within 2 has slightly better stealth. Sneaking was an option in the original, but it could feel a bit trial and error, as the only way to tell if an enemy could see you was whether or not they were currently trying to put their fist through your head. As in the first game, you rarely have two bullets to rub together, so slipping around the haunted, who are the more common foot soldiers, becomes more important. Here, for example, you're trying to sniff out secrets in a charming cul-de-sac and must lure away the freaky neighbours with the time-honored tradition of throwing bottles. When the shifty eye icon pops up, you know the haunted is alerted and your pulse quickens. It doesn't help matters that it keeps making a sound like a cat trying to clear its throat. Of course, with the right skill upgrade, Sebastian can be channeled into a more formidable action force, but that's only valid when you actually have bullets. Deciding which kind of approach to take is every bit as intense as executing the plan. If I learned anything from my time with The Evil Within 2, it's that it wants to be every kind of horror experience at once. So while it's often like this, it also does bits like this. Yes, it wouldn't be a true sequel to The Evil Within without at least one bit where you hobble away from some impossibly nasty monster. In the first game, it was a sadist who wanted to do some sadism on you, and this time it's, well, whatever this thing is. Made of lots of different bits, all of them scary and painful, it kind of reminds me of one of those messed up toys the nasty neighbor kid built in Toy Story 1. I'm pretty sure The Evil Within 2 isn't part of the extended Pixar universe, but you never know. Either way, this creature of relentless horror is the perfect opportunity to learn how to run like hell and hide inside lovely warm air vents where all is good and no harm can possibly... Ah, oh, rats. Better do some more running like hell. The Evil Within 2 is nothing if not a good workout.
You know how your dad always used to fumble the camera and accidentally chop your head off in family photos? Well, here's a guy who chops your head out of photos and does it on purpose and for real. Yes, Sebastian isn't the only person taking a vacation inside the head of his kidnapped daughter. Other humans have snuck in with their own twisted purposes. These are psychopaths and thrill seekers who can't fulfill their nasty fantasies in the real world, so are trying their luck in this universe instead. One such visitor is Stefano Valentini, a serial killer slash photographer, which must be a pain in the ass to fit on a business card. He likes to take pictures of people in their moment of death, which I'm pretty sure is a violation of Instagram user policy. Not wanting to leave anything to chance, he's turning STEM into a big canvas for his work. He's the one responsible for all those hanging bodies earlier. Hashtag no filter, hashtag no pulse, and he's out to get Sebastian. What's great about this villain is that he's constantly present without directly appearing in the world. You'll often find his camera set on tripods pointing in areas where he expects his models to die. At one point in our demo, we found a train carriage with a tasty pile of meds and ammo at the other end. Yes, it screamed trap, but it was nine in the morning and we hadn't had a coffee. Grabbing the goodies drew in a swarm of haunted and only then did we spot the camera and say cheese and die. Needless to say, when we finally catch up with Stefano, we are going to give him a selfie to remember. Let's talk about freedom. You might think freedom is a bad thing in a survival horror game. Fear rises when you are limited in your options and have no place to go. The Saw movies wouldn't be as effective if you could walk around the horrible death traps and take one of 10 exit doors instead. While Sebastian spends a lot of his time in The Evil Within 2 trying to stop his legs being ripped off, he's also given the chance to stretch those legs in wider open areas. But rather than drain the game of tension, it's simply a different way of the game giving you enough rope to hang yourself with. For starters, in a world with tens of different routes, it's harder to control the situation. You might have to drop on a haunted lurking in one alley, but there's nothing stopping his friends hearing your takedown and swarming in from elsewhere. In the first game, you didn't often have to be aware of what was behind you. You were creeping in one direction and killing anything you met. This time, there is a whole world behind you, one that is full of monsters who will happily snack on your back. If anything, instead of feeling empowered, when I entered the first area, I was more overwhelmed by the range of options, and that is really stressful. Do you break into a house to look for supplies, take to the rooftops to survey the situation from high ground, or avoid conflict entirely and sacrifice potential rewards for safe passage? You feel more responsible for your own options this time round, so it's your own fault when it all goes to hell. It's definitely the biggest leap forward from the original game, and a change I think fans are going to love. Those are some of the ways The Evil Within 2 has got under our skin so far. Honestly, some bits of the demo were so freaky I felt myself reaching for the pause button. We're going to have loads more about the game on the channel, so please do subscribe if you want to hear more about The Evil Within 2. And let us know what you think of the game so far in the comments. Do you think you'll be able to handle it? Be brave, viewer, and we'll see you again soon.